Welcome to The Fight with Teddy Atlas. This is Rob Moore, and I'm here with the legend, Teddy Atlas. Uh, we're waiting on Ken to arrive from L.A. He's flying in today after the Tyson Fury-Deontay Wilder fight. And uh, to take advantage of the time, we're going to go through some questions that have come in over the past couple hours. Um, people asking Teddy questions, but they're mostly in relation to the Tyson Fury fight. Um, First of all, let me just yeah. say that finally the mystery man is out of the shadows. This is Rob Moore. Uh, this is the day that you get to meet him, the man behind the scenes, the man that we're grateful for the work that he puts in and the producing of this show. Uh, he's kind of like Al Heyman, you know, the, the <laughs> Wizard of Oz, you know, the man behind the curtain, uh, the guy that runs PBC with Fox. Nobody sees Al Heyman. He likes it that way. He likes being that mystery man, that man in the shadows, that you wonder, who is he? What's he look like? Well, we finally brought... My man, Rob, out of the shadows. And the reason why I'm in a suit, it's not because Rob's here. I mean, I would I wear a suit for him because this moment is such a momentous moment. But it's because I'm coming, I came directly from Bristol. I've been up there the last couple of days covering the fights, uh, you know, covering the Fury fight, Fury Wilder fight for ESPN. And we didn't want to waste any time to, to get this podcast out there for you guys so the car brought me down came right here and uh suit and all baby you know so it's it's not even wrinkled but i was on uh i was on this morning with it i fell asleep in the car for a few minutes so hopefully it's not wrinkled you were also doing some radio interviews uh from the car or was that prior to leaving no, i was in bristol be okay before we i did the sports center stuff and then we did the radio national espn yeah, great. Well, uh, I'm looking at our, our Twitter handle now, which is um, at the fight WTA. Um, and again, we posted, uh, posted this just a, uh, maybe an hour ago looking for some questions. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through the list of, of the top questions here, Teddy. Oh, good. Um, so the first of, first of these is, uh, why was he so worried about Fury's weight after the weigh-ins? Uh, could you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, good question. Because it was heavy, you. I love you guys. You know, you listen. I can frustrate you, right? I could get it wrong. You can frustrate me too sometimes with the questions. Uh, but that's fair. I I got the wrong. I got the wrong winner here. But, and we're always honest, full transparency. Uh, we we live up to it. You know, we own up to it. Uh, listen, how can you not? It's out there in public anyway. But. Don't try to get around it and, you know, be able to fudge it or, you know, finagle it, manipulate it. I got it wrong. But what I was right about, the reason why I was concerned about the weight was he was almost 20 pounds heavier. Why would he do that? Why would he do that? You know, because he had success in the first one. He got a draw. He didn't lose. So why, why would he change that? So... It had to, if, if I'm thinking of such things and not just in a deep sleep, not just, you know, saying without any research, without any searching, with, with fights like this that can be tricky, you, you want to have a sort of a, a fog light in your mind that you're going through the fog, you're trying to figure it out. So... You know, you're a little bit of a detective trying to figure out why why would it be heavy? You know, now what are the there's only a few reasons, but you try to figure out those reasons. Undisciplined Ruiz got heavy. That was purely out of lack of discipline because of the money that he made. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, well, Fury made a lot of money after that last fight. That's you know, he made a lot of money after that. He that's when he signed the hundred million dollar deal with ESPN. Yeah, came, came after that. So I'm thinking, okay, that's a concern. Did he put it on because he made money? It doesn't really turn out to, to look that way now. But it was a concern until I knew. Mm -hmm. And uh, d did he, you know, did he get satisfied? He started talking about retirement. Yeah. Oh, I think I not should. Not a be good sign. Not a good sign. So. Those are a couple of reasons. He, his greatest physical asset 
in the ring has been his agility, his mobility, his elusiveness, his defensive, you know, resources, where he can move around that ring, and he did it well in the with his head movement and his legs in the first meeting. Well, when you go up to 273 pounds, that's going to be diminished. You know, you start putting more weight in the car, guess what? Those tires are going to flatten out a little bit. <laughs> Right, they're going to compress. It's not the right, not, not the right type of weight from what from his appearances. So you know, I mean, the trunks were a little high, yeah. <laughs> buddy. Whoever this question is from, trunks were a little high. So, so, but Karen Williams, it looks Ka- like Karen. You know, Karen I'm giving Williams. you the answers, and so yeah, I'd be, I would be like, a, I'd be like a zombie if I didn't have those thoughts. If I, you know. I'd be less than what I try to be if I didn't have concerns. And those were the reasons. Those were all the reasons for the concerns. And at the end of the day, the one thing I was right about for me was as soon as I saw that weight, what did I say? I said, I believe his banter. I believe his bravado. I believe that he will be aggressive. Where most people... Stephen A. Smith, we had fun. He said, he's lying. He's t-. And I said, no, I don't think he's lying. He's, you know, he's going, the reason why he's going to be, could be some other psychological stuff that we could go into. And the feelings that he felt from the first fight of when he needed to change. But just the physical fact of putting that weight on told me that, yeah, he will be aggressive. Like, what choice does he have? Yeah. You know what I mean? He's not going to be going into Dancing with the Stars now, you know? So, yeah, he's going to have to, he's going to flatten out, and he's going to have to be more aggressive. And it turned out, obviously, that it was a smart move. So hopefully I answered you, Karen, uh, the way that you're satisfied. Yep. Um, so another question we've got here is... Um Let's see here. Okay. <clears throat> Can Wilder fully recover from that beatdown? You know, there's a lot of talk of a potential, you know, trilogy here. Um, the question specifically is, can Wilder recover from that beatdown? The bully was bullied. Will he ever be the same? Good question. Put it the right way. The bully was bullied. That was part of it. Part of the equation, what happened, what took place. Not too dissimilar from uh, Buster Douglas standing up to Tyson. When he fought Tyson, yeah, he boxed, but it, but he was the boss with him, you know. And uh, he he faced the bully. He he backed up the bully. He confronted the bully. He exposed the bully. And um, so that that's a well put question. Uh, with From the right, Matthew Fay. Yeah, with the right tone, with the right understanding, Matthew. Um, the answer is not so quick. Not so quick. Because this problem wasn't a one-fight problem. Here's the funny thing, the tricky thing, the honest thing. He's had this problem since his conception, since the genesis of his career. I, I caught some of his fights on ESPN. You guys could go back and find them. Rob, you know what? Maybe we could find them because I had done a breakdown in one of his fights we broadcasted on um, ESPN some yeah, years ago. Yeah, I know where ago. that is. And I broke down his form or his lack of form. Mm-hmm. I, I really did. I broke. They weren't happy. A lot of his people weren't too happy. But in some ways, they would have been well served to have paid attention to it. Mm-hmm. Because I broke down what he was doing. And he was winning. Right. You know that old saying, you know, even though you're winning. I know as a trainer, I try to put forward, and I do put forward this kind of mindset. I tell fighters, even though you're winning, there's still things you could improve on. Don't ever get drunken with your success and cocky and arrogant. You you could be winning and doing things wrong. You know, and, and, you, and you could be losing and doing things right. And you can build on those things and don't get discouraged. But don't get headstrong just because you're winning. There's still things you got to do better. And quite frankly, him and his team, they weren't cognizant of that. They were just winning. And we did a nice breakdown on one of his ESPN fights that we broadcast and that I I was calling where 
I took film and I showed you what he was doing wrong. I showed mm -hmm. you the vulnerabilities, mm -hmm. but they were never corrected. So that's the answer for you is that this has been an ongoing situation here. This just didn't pop up on last night. This didn't pop up against Fury. He's been doing things wrong and getting away with it. Mm -hmm. He's been putting himself in the fire and being pulled out of the fire with that greater race I've been talking about forever. You know, that punches are not made, they're born. That great thunderbolt, Thor's hammer, that he has in that right hand has been, it's been erasing his mistakes. It's been a great eraser. It's been that confessional booth if you're religious and, you know, you do some things wrong out there and, you know, you go, I think it's on Saturdays. I don't, I haven't been. So I'm not sure. And I need to go. But you go into that confessional booth, you know, if you're Catholic, you believe in such things, and it uh, it cleanses, it's supposed to cleanse your sins. But you still better live right. You still better do the right thing. If you're a fighter, you, you still better go to the gym and start correcting what you're doing. And But that right hand has always been that confessional booth for him where it's cleansed him of sins. And... It didn't get the job done, uh, obviously, last night. So it's a situation when you ask, what does it take? Can he overcome this? He's got to learn how to fight. Wow. Imagine saying that. This guy, I'm saying this about a guy who is just two minutes away from, from having been the heavyweight champ of the world. He's just, just moments removed, you know, not even... Not even 15 hours removed from being heavyweight champ of the world and I'm saying to your answer and a great question to your question he's got to learn how to fight he's got to now go back he's got to take his ego mm -hmm. he's got to put it somewhere and listen I, I hate to even say this next part because I'm, I don't want to knock anyone but we're in this business right and we put ourselves in this business where you guys are good enough to support us in a big way because you feel you're going to get the answer you're going to get the truth and that's not always a commodity, that, a commodity that's easy to come by in any business but he needs to get a different team yeah that's I, actually I, one of these I, next questions I mean, here he, you know, he needs to, because obviously they just, all they did was they rolled the bandwagon. I think that's fair to say. They rolled the bandwagon of a great right hand. Uh, something that continued to make up for what they weren't doing right, what they weren't teaching. This kept pulling them out of the fire, pulling them out of the trouble. And so can he come back? Well, there's going to be psychological damage to his ego, to his confidence, no doubt about that. But... It starts where it should have started a long time ago. Learning. 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 Being taught to depend on more than your power. To depend on your overall technique. technique, Your overall ability. That's, you know, that's what it's going to depend on. You, you get a home run hitter in the big leagues, right? If all he does is hit home runs uh, every once in a while, and he doesn't know how to hit for average... Listen, I'm not a baseball expert, but he ain't staying in the big leagues too long. He's not staying in the big. If he can't hit the curve ball, he can only hit fastballs mm -hmm. and make them go 600 feet. You know, it's nice. He's going to be on Sports Center a lot. Mm -hmm. But what about the gaps in between? What about when the curve ball comes? What about when he changes speeds, the pitcher? What about when he doesn't connect? Well, he's got a problem. He's going to go down to the minus, yeah. you know, because he wasn't taught how to properly hit for average, not to depend on the home run. And I think that I finished his answer mm -hmm. with what I just said. He's got to go back to the minor leagues. Yeah. So <clears throat> his trainer is, um, the head trainer is, uh, is it Jay Day's? Days. Yeah, and I had never heard of him before. So he Wilder. met Wilder when he was when Wilder was just nineteen. So this this could be one of those situations where and you I know someone outgrows. And let, yeah, yeah, and let me say again, they did a listen. They did pretty good. They made a lot of money, and they yeah. won a title. And if you want to go deeper, were the opponents the right opponents? Yeah, but he still beat them. He still knocked them out. He, you know, his last fight with Ortiz. This shouldn't be a shock. Well, as much as it is a shock, mm 
Mm-hmm. He was losing six rounds to nothing against Ortiz, 41 years old. You know, good fighter, southpaw, good amateur. Mm-hmm. But he was losing six rounds to nothing. Wow. Going into the seven, and, and the eraser was there. Right. But it wasn't there. It wasn't there this time. So, uh, ag- again, uh, these are things that are past due. After his uh, first fight with Fury, I remember you saying that he was exposed, and a lot of people were saying, you know, yeah. uh, it, like go deeper on that. And it seems as though the team didn't necessarily prepare given what had happened in that first fight. Human nature sometimes. Human nature sometimes that, you know, unless our feet are held to the fire, you know, it's, it's kind of like as a kid, you know, you, you put your hand on the stove and, and your mom tells you, don't do that, don't do that. And you keep doing it, you keep doing it. And then <laughs> one day the stove's on. And you learn, you know. And unfortunately it's a painful lesson, but it it is one of those quirks of our nature if you will where you know the listen maybe the trainers don't know how mm-hmm. again you get the truth here I, and I'm not saying that they did a good job I'm going to give them credit they did a good job in doing all the other things to get them to this point I mean he made 50 million dollars or somewhere in that neighborhood last night mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think you guys understand what the numbers really when, yeah. when it's all said and done it's going to be somewhere around 50 million dollars each mm-hmm. and so hey with 42 wins and 41 yeah, knockouts so, so that's, that's, it had been working but so you know like uh, like from the godfather film you know i love to quote films right i salute uh don uh Culleon. i salute whatever your name is uh the trainer but now we can't help but look at as I said, the other part of it, which has been missing and has finally shown up, has finally had a light put on it that uh, you can't hit a home run all the time, you know? Yeah. And when you can't, you got to be able to hit a single or a double or a bunt. That's right. So um, there are a couple of questions here that, that pair well into this um, from Daniel Allard. Uh, how long would it take to teach Wilder how to fight? If he's a, a another good question, hopefully a good answer here. Uh, depends what kind of student he is. D- depends on his level of arrogance or lack of arrogance, hopefully, but the level of his ability to control his ego and say, yeah, I, I do have to learn. Yeah, I have been uh, getting away with something. I, I've been, you know, I've been getting away that old saying, I'm getting away with murder. You know, I, he, he's been getting away, really. And and some of it has to do with the opponents that they picked. And mm-hmm. now they got a different level of opponent in front of them. Uh, so, again, uh, how long will it take? Depends on his attitude, his ability to learn. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what, see, here's a, Thing that I can't answer for you and I wish I could and it's part of being able to give this question the proper answer is I don't know what the capabilities it doesn't seem like it was great but I don't know what the capabilities of the trainers were to say whether or not he's a good student because if they were teaching he's a bad student yeah <laughs> he, he's a horrible student but if they weren't teaching well then it's par for the course if, he wasn't, if nothing was going in, nothing was is going to be attained. Nothing's going to, if nothing's being given out, what's going to go in here? What's going to learn? What's going to get better if he wasn't being given the right things? So uh, now it would be, you know, now it would be purely finding out. It would be a matter of finding out if he's with a real teacher. Mm-hmm. There's only a certain amount of them in this business, quite frankly. If he's with a real teacher that how his attitude is, how open he is, and what, again, what his capacity to learn is, his IQ. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, this is kind of something that already was uh, just addressed there, but um, worth mentioning given that it, it touches on this again, but it's from Brian Rocket. Wilder is obviously a great athlete, has a dynamic or dynamite punch, but seemingly no real strategies. Would you advise bringing in new people or is it too late? 
has he achieved all that he's going to achieve? He's still better than most in the top 10. Yeah, I mean, that, first of all, we kind of answered this already. Right, but but right. I'll go down the road. I'll go down there quick. Um, the last part is a telling part of the whole thing. Is we're around, and listen, you can only be in the era you're in. Mm-hmm. But we're around in this era where there's not a lot around. Right. So, so, yeah, you can get away with it. Yeah, and he did get away with it. But he didn't get away with it last night. And if you want to be the best you can be, then obviously you have to address your shortcomings. You know, you got to, I'm going to use another movie. Uh, I like this one. Uh, Clint Eastwood, you know, Dirty Harry. When he said to the guy, he said, and of course he had his 44 Magnum, but he said to the guy, a man must know his limitations. Beautiful. A man must know his limitations. And, you know, <laughs> right. and they don't allow you in the ring with a 44. So that means that right. you got to learn, you know, the proper way to throw punches where you can be more consistent with your results. And so for the answer to that question, Again, it's uh, the answer to that question is that you have to, you know, you are where you are now. And you want to keep going this way? There'll be other guys you can line up. There'll be other guys. They can still find more, you know, more of those uh, statues, you know, to knock down. Mm -hmm. More pins to knock down in the bowling alley. Yeah, you know, you don't have to be a good bowler to knock pins down. You just throw it down. You're going to miss some, but you're going to knock some down. When you're a puncher, kind of like that, kind of like being a bowler. You don't have to be, you know, uh, that guy that throws it perfect. You, you, as long as you keep it within within those certain parameters, you're going to knock some pins down. He can still knock some pins down. But is that what you want? At the end of the day, do you care about finding out? Do you want answers to questions of, Maybe you don't want them. Yeah. See, that's going to come into his character to who he is. He's 34, yeah. too. Maybe you don't want those answers. And maybe maybe the fire, and he has a great question, maybe the fire is not burning anymore because he's made so much money mm-hmm. where there's no urgency. And urgency is important. To have an urgency, to, to have to face the piper. Really. Yeah. To have to answer the door when the devil knocks. To have that urgency. He might not have that urgency. But then if you don't have that urgency, then it goes to another thing. When when it's quiet, when the light's out, when it's all said and done, when you can't come back to this, you just made a good point. He's 34. That time's coming. When you can't come back to this anymore, do you want to know? Do you want to know? Do you want to be left with what if? What could I have been? How much greater could I have been? Do mm-hmm. you want to know? Do you want to know? Or can you live with that? Or will it wake you up at night? Shake you. Yeah. Um, and prior to the fight, you had put up a tweet that basically, you know, many were saying that the fight meant more to Tyson Fury, but in your minds, that wasn't true. Or in your mind, that was not true. Where without the belt, Wilder doesn't have that legacy of, of Fury that Fury's already laid out with coming back from depression, coming back from you know the layoff and issues with drugs and whatnot. So there's, there's really, this is like a moment in time for Wilder where uh, he still needs to cement that legacy. He's been stripped of the only thing he had, the title. And, that's, and I did say, you, you, you just covered what I said probably verbatim. I mean, that's what I did say, is that he he only, all he had was, he was heavyweight chance. He was the bronze bomber. Now he's maybe the tin bomber. I don't know. I'm not here to knock him and make fun, but to to get to the point, you know, he's not the, I mean, now he's not the champion. He didn't have what Fury had to fall back on that legacy, that great story of fighting depression, you know, beating the demons, coming back to join life. You know, he was, Fury was in a position where people, I hope no one's ever in this position, but they are in this world. I wish they weren't. 
where he didn't want to live no more. He wanted to give up that great gift of life. It's a great gift of life. And um, Fury was in a place where he was ready to give that up. And he got back from that place. It's a great story. I mean, in some ways, he's a folk hero. Really? Mm -hmm. Think yeah. about it. He, he is. Um, Wilder, for his power and his success and his bankroll, he doesn't have that. He He's only got... He's got nothing right now, but he's only got, you know, he's got the past that he was champion, and he's got the bank account, and then he knocked a lot of guys out. But who did he knock out? People are going to start. Yeah, get second. They're going to start. Guess, it's going to yeah. be like here we go with the movies. It's going to be like the Rocky movie. Mm -hmm. You know, you were knocking out bums. What are you talking about? You talk, what are you talking, Mickey? You you're saying I I wasn't good. I wasn't. I didn't do it on my own. They were fixed fights. Not saying they were fixed, they were, but they were setups. They were setups. You were knocking out. This guy is a real guy. club of lying here. Knock your bell off. And so, really, you know, movies. I use them because they speak to life. Sometimes they speak truth to life. They parallel life. They do. I mean, that's why people watch them mm -hmm. because. The, they make sense to watch because they ring a bell with something that somebody can relate to. That's why movies work. And um, he's in that position now, you know, where, oh, yeah, you were champion. Yeah, you could have mansions and cars and all the stuff that Rocky had. But do you have satisfaction of knowing that you of as good as you maybe could have been. That maybe you didn't get help by the opponents being picked. And when you fought arguably your best opponent, which I don't even think is arguable, you fought your best opponent, you failed. Mm -hmm. um, can you live with that? I mean, do you, do you wanna, do you wanna search that out? Do you wanna go into that place? And do what Rocky did in the movie. I know it's easy in the movies because we could just write it up. This you gotta sweat and bleed, and you gotta work, and you gotta you gotta go into uncharted areas, and you gotta find out. You gotta go into dark places and carry a lantern. And the only lantern that you can carry is your belief, your determination, and then you get the answers. You touched on this one a little bit earlier, but a uh, question here from Alfie or at Alfie22 on Twitter. How do you think today's heavyweights stack up against the 90s era? Oh. Um, that being, you know, Tyson, even Lennox Lewis, but Holyfield, uh, Bo. I think that those guys would have knocked out um, Wild a good chance. I mean, their technique was good and they had power. I mean, everyone you just mentioned, they had power. They had physical abilities. Somebody said earlier that Wilder was a good athlete. All these guys had athletic qualities. Every oh, one of yeah. the guys you just mentioned, Rob, I mean, but they could fight. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, anything could happen, but I'm going to say that he loses to maybe everyone you just mentioned. I mean, he got exposed with Fury. The difference with these guys is he would have got knocked out. because, uh, Well, he did get knocked out, but I mean, he might have got knocked out. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, not just a towel being thrown in. Mm -hmm. And I'm um, not just being pummeled or taken apart a little bit at a time by the piranha. But, I mean, a shock might have bit his head right off, you know, with yeah. these guys. These guys were shocks. So, yeah, I don't think he would have... <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, again, you're going to get you're gonna get the truth here. But does that mean I'm right? No, it doesn't mean I'm right. It just means that I'm basing it on what I believe to be right, which is experience. And and cold, cold judgment, not influenced by anything emotional or favoritism or hate or, you know, there's a lot of haters out there, you know. Be careful. There's a bunch of them out there. I know. But it's okay. I got that spray. <laughs> um question here from uh david cushion uh teddy if you were in wilder's corner last night would you have thrown in the towel that's a great question yeah 
I hear that Mark Breland, who was a great fighter in his own, he was maybe the one of the greatest amateurs of all time, gold medalist. Uh, I think he was about 101 and one as an amateur, somewhere along the line. Rob's doing his work right now. He's the man. Uh, but I'm usually pretty close with this stuff, my memory. And he was a, he was like a six-time New York Golden Glove champion when, when there was really good fighters in New York. And when the Golden Gloves was probably one of the most competitive tournaments in the country, if not the most competitive. And he was he won the welterweight championship. He won the world title. He didn't become the pro that people want him to become. No doubt about it. He didn't have the physicality and maybe the mental part of being a little bit more sturdy, quite frankly. He was a tall, wiry guy. Um, uh, built very similar funny thing to Wilder. But it, what an amateur. I mean, he, uh, people... Yes, would, so you hit the nail on the head, I think. Uh, you said... He was. He had an amateur record of 110 and one with uh, 73 knockouts and won five New York Golden Glove titles. Yeah, and he won a gold medal and a gold medal. Yeah, <laughs> not too shabby. I, listen, uh, what was the question again? Yeah, so the question was whether or not you would have thrown in the towel. Yeah, so uh, Mark Breland. One of his trainers. He had two trainers, right? right? Um, um, the guy yeah, exactly. Mentioned. So Breland, but his head trainer um, is uh, Jay Days. Now, from what I'm hearing, and more will come out, but we want to get it to you as fast as we can, so we're closer to it. We get it a little faster. We're supposed to get it faster than you guys. Uh, from what I'm hearing, you're going to hear more of it, that they're attacking Breland, that, that they're saying that uh, the head trainer... Jay, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, didn't want to throw it in. This is what they're saying now. We yeah. don't know the truth except what they're saying. Right. That he didn't want to throw it in and that Breland disobeyed an order from the head trainer and he threw it in. I happen to think he did it the right thing. I think he did the compassionate thing. I think that if he didn't throw it in, he was going to get, he could have got hurt. Put it yeah. this way. He was going to get more hurt than he was. He, there's no arguing he was hurt. There's no arguing that he had been hurt for a while. His legs weren't under him. He had just gotten hit another good right hand. Uh, he, he, was, he was pretty much gone. Now, yeah. you want to wait till he's gone, gone? I don't he wasn't coming back. That's not your job. I know that there's an argument that, he, hey, Teddy, we're going to use your words. He had that great eraser. Not that night. At that point... He didn't have the capacity to use it anymore. He didn't have the mental capacity or maybe the physical capacity or both to use it anymore. You know, uh, the bomb was just going to blow up in the ground. And, you know, it, it wasn't going to be delivered anymore. He, he, he lost that at, at that point in the fight. So to, to hang on that, he's still a punch at that. You got to give him a minute. When do you stop it then? Because it does come to an end. Yeah. And I thought it came to the end. I thought it came to the place where, who better? I don't think Jay was a former fighter. Maybe I'm wrong. But from what I understand, Breland's the only former fighter there. So who better than a guy who's been there? A guy who understands. A guy who f knows what it is and the danger that lurks there, you know, with going too long. So Breland made, a, I thought, a proper compassionate decision, and he stopped the fight. And from what I understand, he might get fired for it. And I hope they're not making him a scapegoat, but it sounds like they might, might, I don't know for sure, be going down that road a little bit. But I would take his side, I would take Breland's side, and say that uh, I would have done the same thing. Yeah. So, um, Jay days doesn't, it doesn't look like he no. has a former, uh, boxing career, former crime reporter actually. And then, um, here, here were his comments. It would have been a crime if he didn't stop it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So here's, he here, could have reported on that. Here are his comments following the fight. Uh, Mark Breland, uh, threw in the towel. I don't think he should have, um, Deontay is the kind of guy who's a go out on his shield kind of guy. And he will tell you straight up, don't throw in the towel. And then you always got to consider also that Dante is a fearsome puncher. So that's always a difficult thing because he does always have that shot to land a big, or does always have that shot to land a big shot and turn things around. That's what happened there. So basically pinning it on Breland and clearly uh, not happy about it. Uh, I think I covered it because yeah. listen, you know, there's a chance to there's a chance to get on the boat too, 
and sometimes the boat has left the dock and if you try to get on the boat you're going to fall into the drink <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean but, but you didn't I, I, there's a chance he could still come back with a punch but I think that that boat had sailed yeah he didn't seem to have anything I, you know in his what I mean I think or... that had sailed and and what are you going to do you're going to keep waiting for that chance and let him keep taking punishment I think that was a ridiculous statement I got to be honest with you yeah that's a cover up that's a that's that that is just wanting to make yourself right and justify why you didn't stop it that we can all do that right I mean I know how to do that <laughs> I, I mean you know uh, we, you can always uh, talk to any kid here, learn how to do that. To, you know, should you should you have uh, made that mess? Well, uh, you know, it was already messy. It was it was already messy, and and my cousin Ray Ray, you know, he he did. But what about what you did? You know, you can always get around culpability and responsibility by talking. But uh, does it make sense? Is it right? What 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 I just read there? No, it's. I mean, at the end of the day, even saying taking out on the shield, what the freak? I, I mean, I know that you hear that in movies, uh, Braveheart, or, or you. Uh, right. But we're not in the movies. We're now now we're not in the movies. I love to use movie references. Now I'm going to separate myself. We're in the real world now. Carry out on your shield. What I the know. Uh, so are, are you serious? Save the fighter from himself. Uh, Carry out on your shield. I mean, I know that's a nice thing. That, that sounds good, and it's been said for as long as boxing's been around. I get it. I get it, but, uh, I mean, uh, taken to the morgue? I know. We, we don't want to say that, right? But but what does that imply? Really, again, you get to the, you get the hard thing here, but carried out on a shield. So carried out on a cot, carried out on a stretcher. Is that what it means? No, th really. I mean, let's get away. Let's That's what get it means. away. Yeah, let's get away from. Let's get away. You know, from the movie, the the drama of it, the you know the the way that it fits into you know to folklore type stuff of where you you say these catchphrases where they sound. They sound meaningful. They sound strong. Carried out on your shield. Okay. But is that in reality now? Now reality. The guy is like this close to being like really gone. Maybe hurt. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's already been hit with that last right hand. He's, he's just about gone. He can't defend himself. So just let him take the punch and carry him out on whatever it is. There are no shields, by the way, yeah. in the ring. But there are stretches. So is that really what you're saying? So let's just clarify things. Really, not like get people get away with jimble jumble boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Uh, so carried out, he wants to be carried on the stretch. Now a fighter's going to say that. But in reality, does he want to? No. Does his family want to? No. Right. Do you want him to? I don't think so, really. As when a fan, comes, you don't. You don't want to see that. At the end of the day, it comes to a point. You want your fighter to give everything. There's no doubt about it. Do you want him to submit, quit? No. But you want him to give everything. Then it's up to you. Your responsibility as the trainer. Part of it is being his guardian. Yeah. Your responsibility to say he can't defend himself. He, I have to stop it. We'll come back another day. Yeah, live to fight another day, right? Because we are human. We're supposed to have that. That's the line that has to be drawn. You know, this, 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 and that's that. That sounds good, not good, good, not good. But it's not the Roman gladiator days. Yeah, they they were carried out dead on their shields. Yes, because they had no choice. They fought till somebody was dead, and that's part of our uh, the history of the world. That, that absolutely had, took place. But that's not what we're talking about here. You give forth every ounce of what's in your heart and soul. And he did. And he did. And when that's, when that's not there anymore, somebody makes a decision that's civilized. That's the difference from where we are today and where those Roman gladiators were back then. Yeah.
So um, <clears throat> we've covered a lot on uh, on Wilder. Moving to Fury, we've got a couple questions here. Um, this one from Miles Carter Actor um, on Instagram. Is Tyson Fury that good or is Wilder very limited or is the truth somewhere in between? Great question. Truth somewhere in between. Uh, Wilder, it's a great question. I'm glad it was asked. You know why? Because it should be brought up. And we'll talk more about it in the podcast later. But uh, the fight was sloppy. There was a lot of sloppy moments. Now that's now that's sober up a little bit. Yeah, get the smell yeah. and salts. Get get <laughs> past the drama and the, wow, whoa, ah, okay, good, great. But now you know, especially you guys across the pond, you don't have to sober up. <laughs> yeah. No, no, and I'm being that serious. You guys earned the right not to sober up. You're stuck with them. Your fans. You stay giddy. You stay. You stay in that place. You stay in that beautiful nirvana. Stay there. But the rest of us, let's soap up a little bit. It was sloppy. There was a lot of sloppy parts with Fury and obviously with Wilder. And, but Wilder, it was the right night. You know, was, was Wilder maybe a little off too? You know, that extra weight. We all talked about how the extra weight was going to affect Fury. We forgot to ask how it was going to affect Wilder. Why did he come in 20 pounds more than the first meeting? Why fix something if it's not broken? Why? 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 Could have been so, working on technique instead but, of... You know? Yeah, I mean, but they don't know how. If you don't know how, you can't work on it. But so all I'm saying is on this particular night, Fury had the right plan. Fury had the right style. Fury had the right determination. Fury had the right ideas. Fury had the right punches. Fury had to write everything on that particular night. And yeah, he was better than Wada. Was was it a matter of him being a, the greatest fighter on the planet? No. It's partly Wada being that vulnerable. We've talked about it. That ex, exposable. That, you know, um, bankrupt of technique, quite frankly. It's a combination. It's a combination of of all those things, uh, it's somewhere in between. You know, it's, it's a combination of the vulnerability that was always there, and this guy exposed it. That, you know, styles make fights. Mm -hmm. Going forward was the right style. Yeah. Going forward with a big guy like Fury was the right style to not only expose him, but to eliminate him. Other styles like Ortiz was the right style to expose him, but not eliminate him. Mm -hmm. this guy had the size to reach he out jabbed him his jab landed first it cleared the way he was like a snow plow coming down the street fury where the plow is clearing the way yeah that jab cleared the way it kept him off balance you know it kept him it kept him where he was discombobulated where he couldn't throw that right hand back mm -hmm. the right way or at the right time like he did with some other people or set himself. Mm -hmm. So it was, the, it was the right style, the right guy at the right time uh, or the wrong guy, depending on what side of the fence you're looking at it from. Uh, in there were wilder. Were you impressed by... Um, so in the first fight, Tyson Fury was very much fighting off the back foot. Uh, and then this one coming forward, were you impressed with that uh, change of plans and and uh, his team's work in terms of getting him ready for this rematch? Yeah, very. Because there's two ways to deal with a big puncher. The way he did the first time, keep more balance, box, uh, give angles, sniper in between, counter in between, don't stand directly in front for too long. Just don't let him get set. Keep his feet moving. Don't let him get set. And do it on the outside. But there's another way. There's another way. The other way is to back him up. Keep him on his back foot. Don't let him be set in that way. Don't let him be set to deliver that big punch because he's going backwards. The other way is don't let him get set because he's changing direction all the time trying to catch up to you. So there's two choices. The first choice, give him all the credit in the world. My guy, he's a genius. Yeah. I mean, if he really did it for that reason. 
But yeah, because the first one he did really good. He earned him this fight, but it wasn't good enough because he got a draw and he got dropped twice. Mm-hmm. This time he decided to go. He his instinct, his intellect, whatever you want to call it, decided to go with this choice, this option of how you can deal with a puncher by backing him up. Henry Armstrong, who I think he, he well, I think Henry Armstrong. This is a great sport, and unfortunately people out there don't know enough about the history the way they do sometimes about baseball and the other sports that have been around a long time. Baseball is the closest because it's available. The information's available. The history's available. It's it's not talked about enough in boxing. Henry Armstrong is a guy who had 300 fights, had about 120 knockouts. You're going to get it again. You're my man. And there's a guy who won full titles. Rob, there's a guy who was featherweight. Lightweight, welterweight champ. Forget about the middleweight. Oh, I got 100 titles here. Junior this, junior that, WBC. We're talking about one champion. We're talking about the best in the world. He was a featherweight, lightweight, welterweight champ. And then he fought for the middleweight title against Severino Garcia. And he refused to make a deal with the fellas. And they made it a draw. He really won that fight. So he really should have been... Oh, my God. Featherweight, lightweight, welterweight, middleweight champ. But he had three titles and, and defended him, defended him, you know, uh, at, at, you know, defended all three titles at the same time. Uh, so this guy's a monster. This guy, I mean, Hammer and Hank, Homicide Hank, whatever nickname you want to give him that he used. This, this guy was a monster. And he fought the best back in the day when... You weren't just manipulating your way around. You weren't just tap dancing your way around to get a good record. You fought everyone. You had to. You had no choice. Everyone had to fight everyone in the pool, baby. Everyone had to fight everyone. And he, and they, you had the greatest fighters around back then. And he fought everyone. And this is a guy who his main MO was to get his head on your chest and push your back. Mm push you back where where you were on the back foot where you couldn't quite get the the zing and the zang that you wanted to get and he you know he used that method uh to be the great henry armstrong to me he's one of my three greatest fighters in a history of a in a sport that has a history of that no other sport has 200 years and he's one of three greatest fighters of all time what do you got on him? Yeah, so <clears throat> again, this is from uh, Box Rack. And since so many of his fights, I remember you saying in the past, were not technically recorded. I think they were just given, uh, uh, ruled by the newspaper where they were like newspaper, newspaper about. decisions. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because, because in some places, boxing was outlawed. Right. So they, they, the newspaper guys would come, the writers, it was a giant sport. It was bigger than baseball. And the newspaper writers would come and they would, they would give a score. They would say who won it in the newspaper decision. So as for official fights, uh, 183 bouts. Pretty, pretty good. 152 wins with 101 knockouts and uh, nine, nine draws and uh, 22 losses. But really fought everyone as you were saying it's it's uh incre- he's got two full pages on box rack just going through all of his bouts and again if you really went to the historians that are out there and you found all the records you'd find he had 300 fights yeah. uh, does it have in there you talk about well i'm going to kind of segue a little bit here but um and then and like i said he had three titles you see that yeah and he simultaneously defended them uh, in, in like a two month period mm-hmm. featherweight lightweight and welterweight that's in, oh, it's beyond incredible but this is a guy who you know we we got kind of like into a place where if a guy fights like three times a year we think he's active like yeah. you know what I mean like he fights three four times oh he's active like if he's at a high place Do you, uh, read how many times he fought in a year I know there was one time he fought over 30 times in a year I mean, I'm just looking at, um, say, for example, 1938. Yeah, grab a year. Grab a year. 1938, he fought one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 times in 1938. So, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> and he won every single one of those fights. Yeah, and against good fighters. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. And and 10 round or more rounds, uh, every yeah. one of them, or 15. And there were times, if you picked a year, there are times that he fought 30 times. I mean, can you, I mean, 14 times, there's fighters that are fighting for world titles were 14 fights. He fought, as, as a champion, he fought 14 times in a year. But there were times you're fine. One, there's one there you're fine. Fourteen becomes a small number. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, uh, especially early in in his career, where I'm guessing just for you know to make an income, you have to you yeah. have to have that many fights. And to get you know, and the way they got better was getting experience. Mm-hmm. They they weren't afraid of a loss because they know they were going to learn. They were going to get better, and the goal was to get better, not just to make money. They want to make money, but it was to get better so they could be what they needed to be and have that kind of consistency and longevity so just a uh, final question to wrap this up before we um, dive into the full pa- podcast breaking down the fight uh, which actually might go up uh, prior to this we'll we'll determine that but um just quickly i'm sure you and ken will discuss this more but uh what do you see kind of taking place in the heavyweight division uh going forward now we've got Wilder without a belt. We've got um, Fury with a belt. We've got Joshua now. Obviously, the mega fight would be uh, uh, Wilder, or sorry, Fury versus uh, Joshua. Um, uh, we've got Andy Ruiz in the mix too, an exciting fighter. Um, Dillian White. Uh, where do you th- see things going forward? At this point, Rob, it's about the money. Yeah, uh, it, it's about the money. I mean, you just mentioned that 33, 34 years old, 35, whatever. Um, It's about the money. It's about you at this place now, from the promoters to the fighters, you know, let's get the most money. That's what it's about. So it's really about with all those fights are good fights, but it's it's not about them, the reality. Right. It's about the power brokers in this business, the kings in this business, the... uh, you know, the the guys that own the real estate in this business. There's only three of them. There's only three of them that really run it. It's not like the sport is looked out for on a whole for the fans or for the goodness of the sport. Kind of like UFC is with one guy running it, yeah. Dana White. He's going to put forward the best thing and the best plan and the best arc to get to the best place for the overall sport. No. No, <laughs> don't make me laugh. I mean, the, these guys, they, they're going to take their own little power and their positions and they're going to make, make the, the most, most money, money out of it. Yeah, And that's it. They're not caring about the overall, you know, territory of boxing or uh, welfare of boxing. So, or the fans. They care about the fans to the point that they pay, that they give them the fight that they pay the most for. Yeah, they care about that. Uh, that's to a certain extent but then if they don't control it and the other opponent the the other dance partner in the equation is controlled by someone else they might stay away from it because they don't want to lose control so that's going to come into the mix but here's where it's at it's either going to be the trilogy because they have a rematch clause oh, okay yeah there's a rematch I didn't realize clause that. oh yeah yeah they put it in there they put it <laughs> in there so you know Aram is with ESPN and they gave a hundred million dollars uh, to Fury to sign him up. They're going to want the trilogy. Yeah. Aaron want, wants to show the executives, look what I did, and you know, and and they want the trilogy. And they're they're in the driver's seat. They're they're in a yeah, they're in the king's throne, uh, kind of like what Fury went into. <laughs> so they they're going to want that no matter what. Even though you can make an argument, this fight wasn't really a great fight. It, it was a one sided fight. It was a beatdown, yeah. but it it had. But it did have the energy the of Jaws. Yeah, uh, it is, did. Is Jaws going to come up? Jum, jum, jum. You know, is he going to come back and not go? And if and any everyone likes to watch a upset taking place. There's drama to that. So it had all that. But now the biggest fight out there is Joshua. Can you imagine, Rob? Let me put this in proper perspective. They have the same connections over in London, both of them coming from across the pond. Love you guys. Uh, both of them come from across the pond, right? Joshua has put 90,000 fannies into the seats at Wembley Stadium fighting doormen 
from the King's Arms restaurant. <laughs> nice restaurant. Good hamburgers, right? Yeah, good hamburgers. Egg on top. Yeah, egg on top. I like that. That's pretty nice. Um, if if you're into that, and now, can you imagine? Talking about drawers, you got to get a bigger boat. We're going to need a bigger <laughs> boat. We're going to need a bigger boat. That fight, it will be the biggest fight in the history of of the heavyweight f- history. It would be the biggest. It would it, make more money than anything, and they're going to need to build another stadium. I mean, it, it's just forget it. There's no comparison. Water or forget it. Don't even, I don't want to have the conversation. That doesn't mean that Wilder and Fury won't be the next one because of contracts and because of power and because of the promoters that you know they want to keep their control and Aram's got the upper hand now um but there's gonna be a push with Joshua now there's gonna be a push we know he's vulnerable and they know they know that the biggest fight they don't want to risk and lose to somebody and blow it they know that that's the biggest fight in the universe out there Mm -hmm. in the galaxy and so does Fury so, you know, your shelf life isn't that long in this business. You never know. You never know when you get old. You never know when s- something changes. When, so, you know, strike while the iron's hot. The fight, the biggest fight out there in the history of the sport for the heavyweight title is Joshua now and Fury. And it's just a matter of whether or not they, they, try, they can and they do push for that before the rematch. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be one of those. It's going to be one of those. I mean, do you, if you bring new trainers in to Wilder, do you dare say, I want to teach them to the point of these good questions? I want to, this is what this knucklehead over here might say. I might risk that. That's, for, for me, that's how I think. I might say, get the right guy. Don't, you know, get as safe a guy as you can. But, let me have time to correct things and then give me one fight back with him. Mm-hmm. One fight with him to... Confidence to, builder. To, to confidence builder and to work on the new things. Yeah. Like a dress rehearsal. Yeah, and, and then we'll go for the, you know, the big enchilada. But most likely they're going to say, <laughs> what are you, out of your mind? Uh, we're not going to risk that, you know. But you never know. You're saying Fury's camp wouldn't risk... Um, well, the re- Waters, the- Waters camp. If Waters, the, if they're gonna make Water and uh, and Fury, I I would want if I was you brought new people in to train Water, I I'd want definitely the time to train them and the possibility of thinking about the possibility of getting a right guy. Yeah, you know, and I have one fight back as a conference builder, as you said, and also as a dress rehearsal. Right. So it essentially would give. Fury a bit of time to potentially have this this Joshua fight is that kind of what you're thinking where it would maybe happen prior to this trilogy they're fight? not gonna let the, I mean it's possible but I mean water they have a rematch clause so they're gonna enact that clause mm. as far as I understand we'll get more information later but I'm usually pretty close to being yeah. accurate and I think that Wilder's people they have that and they're gonna enact it they're mm-hmm. going to say, bang. I don't know what the exact timeline is. It's within six months, three months, whatever. I don't know. But uh, we're going to, we want it. We're going to enact this clause right now. And so then it's just going to be a matter of getting around. Because, you know, like Don King said, what did he say? He said, contracts were written, contracts were written to be broken <laughs> something like that <laughs> oh god no hey, no you know what his famous quote was uh if you haven't noticed uh contracts don't get in the ring <laughs> something like that contracts don't get in the ring so i'm sure that there'd be a lot of uh you know funny business or maneuvering put it that way too funny so um just kind of on that note uh, and we'll we'll wrap up after this question. But given that we're talking about Fury and Joshua, uh, this question just came in from uh, Patty Irishman uh, at Mister Canning on Twitter. Uh, does this version of Tyson Fury beat current Anthony Joshua? Very interesting question, and I want to give it. You know, I want to give it the full. Sometimes you can answer some quick, and sometimes you have to give it more thought because you care about the answer being accurate. Yeah, or what you think is accurate. 
ஆம் the joshua the question is yeah so the question is and it's it's well worded because it says does this version of tyson fury so this kind of on the offensive tyson fury beat the current anthony joshua where in that most recent ruiz fight he was you know very much uh uh bobbing and weaving and kind of getting getting out of harm's way and hiding as you like to say hiding the china of a uh, yeah. potential you know porcelain chin it's an interesting fight I I was I, I'm more inclined to say yes to say yes but I'm hesitant to jump to it right I'm I'm reserved a little bit cautiously you know thoughtful about being aggressive to say because you got to be cautiously aggressive you don't just walk in that's a good thing that Tyson Fury did he came in behind the jab he didn't just walk into right hands he he plowed the way clear with the jab last night uh with this version of Joshua very fragile in his last fight but he did make a complete transition to a different fighter a boxer completely i mean completely he went into like he, he went into like a molecular chamber and became a different guy <laughs> in every way i mean he looked different and and he fought different and he acted different and he thought different um so but there was still some fragility you could see it now does he get oh, better yeah. does he get better from that fight of having it under his belt yes he he should how much better we don't know i would favor fury but the ability now of joshua to box now now the tables would be kind of reversed it kind of be like Wilder fighting Fury the first time. Now Fury would be in the position of Wilder. Fury would be like going and and he's only had one fight under his belt with this this kind of mindset, this mm-hmm. kind of style. It would be very interesting. Now he'd be the guy, he'd be the hunter, you know, and he'd be the guy that pursuer and he'd be maybe chasing, he'd be going after and Joshua would be doing what Fury did to him wilder in their first fight boxing keeping more balance pot shotting winning the fight till he got caught and maybe in a position where if joshua doesn't get caught he can win with that style it could be a difficult style yeah so not so fast to jump not so fast my friend to jump and say oh yeah just fury yeah yeah i favor him because of his confidence, because he knows how to win. He knows how to win. He knows how to come yeah, up with the right ideas. You know, he knows how to win. There's something special in there. You guys over, of course, upon that's because you guys are special. It's because you guys are special. And uh, it would be very interesting. There would be the side to it that Joshua could keep him more balance and pot shot him and get to the finish line, or that Fury could track him down. Fury could track him down better than Ruiz did. M- much better than Ruiz did because Ruiz had whatever weight he was, uh, 280 something, whatever it was, yeah, wasn't sure. capable of pulling the trigger, wasn't capable of carrying the water, you know. So it, it could it would be very interesting, but I think I laid it out to the, the yeah, perfect. both sides. All right, this has been fun. Thanks to everyone for sending their questions in. Uh, Teddy, thank you. Uh, again, our, our social handles for the, uh, the fight with Teddy Atlas is at the fight WTA. Uh, Teddy is uh, at Teddy Atlas Real on Twitter and at Teddy underscore Atlas on Instagram. Um, maybe we do one of these again, answering these questions. I think it's fun. Uh, thank you again, and we'll be back soon.